we have all board members present except for uh, Mr. Gonzalez, Mr. Crowley, and Dr. Allen. This is a board. Jen Crowley. Oh, oh, okay. Mr. Crowley is just now coming in. Um, this is a board workshop on Did facilities. And Mr. Eads. Uh, thank you. This is one of the uh, four scheduled uh, workshops that the board had requested uh, that we have. And uh, what's going to happen is we're doing just a facilities overview this time. Uh, and as y'all have requested in the past, it's just to make sure that we understand the process and what we're going through and how we're addressing our facilities. And uh, it's my understanding that we're going to go ahead and let the presentation be presented. And after that, uh, we'll address all the questions. Is that how y'all want to handle it? Yes, okay. please. And Dr. Allen has joined us also. Okay. Well, I'm here tonight to give you an overview of our maintenance department. And uh, just kind of want to start out with an introduction to maintenance and what it is. Of course, it's the process of preserving or keeping something in good condition. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, I just want to show you this little bit of research that shows that, uh, you know, a positive relationship exists between school conditions and student achievement and behavior. I know typically we don't correlate that with student achievement, what the conditions of our schools are, but that definitely research shows that that is a very important part <clears throat> of student learning and uh, growth. So I wanted to point that out to you uh, in the beginning. Um, <clears throat> the next few slides are going to show kind of where we were a year ago. Um, I think most of you are aware I came last May uh, to the San Marcos School District. Uh, prior to that, in March of 2014, um, the uh, district requested that TASBO come and do a study of the maintenance uh, in custodial department, uh, including the grounds um, and the facilities and also energy management. Um, <coughs> the, uh, <coughs> what I'll focus on tonight is uh, they, did, they did look at all those things, but what I want to focus on tonight is what, what they found out in the maintenance department. Uh, their findings, they're probably kind of hard to read on your uh, sheet and uh, but I just kind of wanted to go over them. Um, they made several observations, uh, basically stating that uh, <clears throat> there was a lack of direction and production of staff. There was a lack of standard, standard operating procedures. Uh, the work order system was outdated. There was a lack of work time being set and followed. Um, there was a lack of documentation, and the grounds presently were contracted out and they were kept below acceptable levels. Uh, they, they made several recommendations. I was uh, going to say, Jay, did you prepare this? Yes. I was going to say. Well, I mean, I didn't I was prepare gonna that. No, I was just going to say about being so light, you know. Oh. I don't know if you had looked at it before or. I, I hadn't looked at it on here. It shows up dark on that one. Still pretty, pretty light. Um, but anyway, there, the other rec the recommendations from their findings were basically to give direction and have documentation to improve efficiency and effectiveness, possibly through a new uh, computerized maintenance management system, uh, to improve leadership, staff training, and have accountability, and to take the grounds back in house. And I apologize. John, that is hard to read. Uh, this next slide shows kind of an overview of what maintenance is. Uh, and that's kind of what the district and, and what it, all it oversees. Uh, as you can see, it co covers a broad scope of stuff. And, uh, but I wanted to look at what the expectations were for maintenance in this district as I began working here. And uh, I think this is pretty much the scope of what it covers. And, and I'll come back to that slide in a little bit and go over it a little more in depth. Uh, but uh, from that, we established some goal, a goal with some objectives. The goal, as you can read, is to efficiently maintain 
uh, San Marcos CISD's facilities with the commitment to sustain comfortable, protected, and orderly environment that is conducive to learning. With the objectives to be proactive with building maintenance, implement successful industry standards, use cost control measures, and develop and maintain protocols that minimize systems downtime. <coughs> with that, I wanted to, we also looked at what we maintain, how much we maintain. Um, this is each campus that we have by square footage. It also has the years that they were renovated um, in there. As you can see, overall we have about 1.5 million square feet that we maintain and wow. about 351 acres of property, wow. which is, yes, it is a lot. Um, this next slide shows the staff that we use to maintain that. Uh, of course, myself as the director of facilities and construction. Uh, since I came on board, I actually hired one of my staff to be the maintenance supervisor, and it's Renee Rodriguez. We have one clerical staff, administrative staff, which is Chris Landano, and then we, I have 12 maintenance technicians, and those are broken out at the bottom, one plumber, one electrician, three HVAC guys, one painter, one carpenter, one lock and key, a plumber's assistant, electrician assistant, and two utility workers. Uh, at the time I came on board, there was one more person. We have not replaced that position that we left vacant by putting Renee in as the supervisor. What did Renee do before? He was an HVAC technician. So in June of 2014, we started implementing a corrective action plan. Uh, the first thing we wanted to do was get a work order system implemented that was conducive. The previous system, as stated by TASBO, was pretty old and, <coughs> and uh, they couldn't get system support for it. Uh, but prior to me coming, actually, they bought a new program. Fortunately, when I got here, I had been using that program where I came from. So it's called School Dude. It's a very well-known uh, work order system, preventive maintenance system. They do facility scheduling. They have several modules that they use. Uh, another thing that we wanted to do is impl implementing a preventive maintenance schedule and evaluating and revamping our grounds maintenance program. Um, as we, this is a slide, and I, I apologize it is hard to read and I don't have a pointer, but this is a screenshot of what I see when I open up the school dude program. And I'm sure it's maybe very hard for y'all to see, but it tells you know, what I have in uh, new requests, uh, work in progress, complete work orders, closed work orders, defined work orders, uh, diff several different sections. Uh, the new requests uh, are waiting on approval. The work in progress, our work is signed and not complete. Uh, complete means it's finished, but hasn't been reviewed by myself or Renee to complete it. And, and then uh, complete, uh, complete means finished but not reviewed by our supervisor. Closed work order means that we closed it, we looked at it, we know the work's done, we closed it out. And then, of course, they have on hold and a parts on order, several other things that you can look at. And you can look at that by the week, by the month, by however you want to look at it. Also, every Monday morning, Renee and I get an email from this program that shows us every wor open work order that is still in the system. And so we review those and, and decide what to do. Um, the, uh, just to kind of let you know, the previous process before I got here, or even ac after I got here actually for the first month or so was uh, the work orders were received by the maintenance clerical staff or by uh, the director those work orders were printed and put in, uh, printed and then uh, divvied out every morning in a maintenance meeting. Um, <clears throat> ours, and that, this program here now, we've got it where every employee, every maintenance staff has either a laptop or an iPad and they carry it with them. If, they're on, if they have Wi-Fi, they can see their work orders. They can see when they get a new work order. Of course, there's still times when we have an emergency work order where we have to call them say, hey, we just put this work order in, but we need you to go look at this right now. But <clears throat> we've got a lot much better process now in handling. Plus, previously, you know, they got a paper copy of the work order, 
then they filled it out, what they had done, and then that had to be in, inputted by the clerical staff. Now they do all their own. They close out their own. This uh, next one, which I know you can't see and you can't see your paper, and I apologize. I did try to make this bigger, but it didn't work. But this is a closed work order, and it shows <coughs> uh, labor, what parts are ordered. This is actually uh, an ice machine at the high school. It shows how many, how many parts we had to order. Uh, it shows several days of working on it, two hours one day, an hour and a half another day. Anyway, and then, of course, it gives us a total at the bottom. This, this helps us track, of course, labor and cost, but it also helps us track equipment. So we know on this ice, particular ice machine, we spent, I believe it's $1,700. <coughs> Uh, it's a very extensive system and we are tracking material costs and labor costs hmm. across hmm. the district. Hey, I'm just curious, what kind of brand of ice machine is it? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a uh, I don't know. Can you send this look. to Mr. Eads and he can send sure. it out to yeah, us? Yeah, I'll send it that to That way if we want to enlarge it and read yeah. it, we can. It's actually three pages it prints out in three pages, but I, I will uh, be sure and do that. Thank you. Um, this next slide shows closed work or orders by the month. Uh, currently, we're averaging about 498 closed work orders per month. As you can see, it dipped a little bit in November. I don't know if that was because of the uh, holiday or of course we had holidays <laughs> in December as well, but uh, maybe we just slowed down work that month. I don't remember that at the time that it was a deal, but anyway. Maybe switching over from air conditioning to heat or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wasn't so bad. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, we average getting 20 to 25 work orders a day wow. in our system. And uh, it, that first slide that I showed you, uh, this one, it shows for, this is for one week. And you can see we, uh, we closed 62, we actually completed That's from one week, but the, <laughs> the guys are working and they're doing very good at keeping up with their uh, stuff. Now back to this uh, slide, I wanted to show you that, uh, again, uh, we cover reactive, emergency, planned maintenance, unplanned maintenance, preventive, planned and scheduled maintenance, and facility alterations. Uh, this next slide gives you a little bit of a uh, definition of reactive versus preventive. Um, we presently, the majority of our work orders are reactive work orders. You know, we definitely want to try to move from that to preventive. Um, and, and I think y'all know what, what the difference is. The one thing that I didn't put a definition of is facility alteration or minor construction. I'll give you a little bit of an explanation on what that is. Um, what I tell the principals is if the paint peeling off the wall, that's a reactive work order or it should be a preventive, but anyway, it's a, it's a work order. If you want it painted because of that, that's a work order. If you want it painted because you don't like the color, that's a facility alteration in, in, in my book. And there is a difference in how we view those work orders and how we do them now. There, I mean, we definitely, that's still under our department. That's something we should do. But um, budgeting for those kind of things is um, a little bit different than, and you know, with every school district or every place I've ever worked, hospital or whatever, you know, there's, you know, one department will order a ice machine and say, I want it over here. Well, you know, you gotta have plumbing to it, you gotta have power to it. And so we're working through some of that process in the same way we're working through our preventive maintenance plan. Uh, right now. And so that's a facility alteration when you have to go back <coughs> and have the plumbing you need the power. Yes, you're altering the facility. Mm -hmm. And so we've talked to purchasing and Ms. Griffith as well about, you know, because if they order the ice machine it costs five or six thousand dollars, you know, we may add another 
two or three thousand, especially if we have to do very much extensive stuff to add add to that. So for the district, that cost actually goes up, and then you know, have we budgeted for that cost? So, and, and I kind of showed that in the next. I think most of you know what preventive maintenance is. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Uh, we're, we want to prevent the failure before it actually occurs. It's, uh, of course, designed to uh, restore equipment or to keep it running. Um, those are uh, things that uh, we want to move toward in our in our maintenance department. Um, in every every maintenance department, I think that I've ever been involved in fights that battle most of the time you know your a lot of your maintenance is reactive but that's definitely not the most efficient thing for the district um, the benefits of preventive maintenance um, you can read there you know it's more cost effective it provides flexibility for staffing um, of course it in increases the life cycle of, of your equipment it can generate energy savings if you're running the equipment more efficiently by keeping your belts changed and filters changed, et cetera. Um, you know, the studies that I've looked at show 12 to 18% cost savings over reactive methods. And another thing that a lot of people don't look at is the customer service aspect of, of that. But obviously, if we can fix something before somebody knows it's broken, we're a lot better at customer service. And I feel like, you know, we're a customer service department. We're there to meet the needs of the uh, students and staff, and that's what we're supposed to do. So customer service is very, very important. Jay, I just have a question. Okay. Where I work, uh, it's, it's policy and procedure that, uh, you know, if I'm gonna replace a piece of equipment or add a piece of equipment, I have to run it through maintenance first, and that mm -hmm. way all the electricals, you know, right. gotta be checked or, you know, something that's going to be not the same as was there before. Correct. You know, so there's not a surprise right. at the end. Is there right. something like that that exists here? No, but we're putting it in place. <laughs> there's nothing uh, like that existing here now. But like I said, I've been talking to Ms. Griffith, and um, we are definitely getting that in place because we've I've run into several things already that, you know, they call me and say, hey, we've got this piece of equipment. We need it running by this time, and, you know, and we need power. And I said, well, that's not, you know, just a quick fix. We need to get them yeah. power so they can so temporarily run the box, it. You know, for more. Do what? What if there's not room in the box for more electrical capacity? Right, right. And that's right. So that is, you know, a part that, um, like I said, every place I've ever worked is from a hospital to other districts that mm -hmm. that's always an issue. But you have to get everybody on board. And you know this size of a district, sometimes that's hard to do. But we're, we're working toward that, and and do plan to get that in place. And the same thing with facility alterations. Most people think that's, you know, that's part of maintenance, and and it is. But still, it's a, it's an added expense that we may may or may not have budgeted for. So it's very important to plan those facility alterations as you go. And as y'all know, I'm sure most of you do that. You know, I mean, we had teachers this past summer. Hey, I want this wall painted. I want an accent wall in my room painted. This, and if I don't watch my painter, he'll he'll paint. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, we have a district standard because you may not be in there next year. You know, so you, you just have to watch those sort of things. I had a principal in Snyder that wanted all the clocks turned off in in the high school. No, he wanted them removed. I want all those clocks removed. And I said, no, I can't. I said I'll turn them off, but I'm not going to remove them. And he goes, no, I want them out there. They're ugly. Once you turn them off, and I said, well, you may not be here in a year or two. And sure enough, he wasn't. And guess what? The next principal wanted the clocks on. <laughs> so <laughs> you, have to, you have to evaluate and try to use some logic sometimes. Um, what items do we plan to, we, and we already do PM a lot of these things. We're not getting it recorded as I, as I want to through our system, but, uh, you know, water heaters, HVAC boilers, playgrounds, uh, kitchen equipment, facility, painting and power washing, parking lots, fire sprinkler system, gas line, we're doing most of those things now. It's just not getting recorded in our software like we need it to. Uh, you know, any equipment maintenance, belts, filters, all, all sorts of things. 
Um, and, and again, that's a process to get that going. Uh, the implementation process is, you know, first of all, we have to audit our facilities, and that's the process we're in right now, identifying our systems. Like I said, we are PMing many, many things, especially our HVAC equipment is getting PM regularly, but it's not getting recorded like it needs to. And so we don't know, just like the ice machine that broke down, you know, we need to know how many times are we touching that unit? What are we doing to that unit? How much money have we spent on it in the last year? And of course, as y'all know, we've replaced 377 HVAC units this past summer. So y'all are doing your job getting, <laughs> getting us new units. We just need to make sure we maintain them. Um, you know, and, and that takes some data collection and uh, some planning through the system, but that's where we are right now. Then, you know, as we go, we'll establish a PM schedule uh, in the work order system, you know, with frequency type of inspections, following the manufacturer's guidelines on what we need to do, and that's where we'll uh, go from there. And, and that that is in the works as we speak. Uh, the other thing that was mentioned in the study was the ground maintenance program, and uh, their recommendation was to hire nine groundkeepers and one lead groundkeeper. We uh, Ms. Griffith and I and others through the district, Mr. Reed, have looked at this to see what we needed to do. Uh, obviously, aesthetically, these campuses don't look like y'all think they should, like we think they should, and, uh, and that's a problem, you know. Um, I told Mr. Mayhew last week, I think, you know, if you drive through a campus, and this is one thing Mr. Reed says harps on me, you drive by a campus, if it looks bad on the outside, you naturally think it looks bad on the inside. And and typically ours don't, they look very good on the inside. Uh, Mr. Gutierrez and his crew do an excellent job at keeping our facility clean. We want it to look good on the outside as well. And so in looking at it and in you know deciding how to best use labor force and people, uh, we decided that we felt like it was better to go with one lead groundkeeper and two groundskeepers rather than hiring 10 people, we're going to hire three and to continue to outsource our mowing contract. Uh, our mowing guys do a good job. It's just that they pull back and they're not keeping our grounds like they need to look. Uh, they're just doing the mowing, not everything That's else that goes right, along with correct. it. That's James, right. what were you paying to outsource the whole enchilada when you were doing the grounds? Sir? What were you paying to do the whole enchilada when we were I don't, Doing the and, and because that was. But it was all contracted out. Right, but last year all the mowing was contracted out and I, I don't remember the cost. Do you, I'm um, thinking. I didn't bring that with me and I don't remember the exact cost and I know it's changed because um, we're no longer having to do the football fields, all that is turf. Oh so yeah. I would have to just do a cost analysis to tell you what we were paying and what we were paying out to the huge amount of facilities that uh, we needed to mow. So well, I just right. remember that when we're, you know, that recommendation from contracting it out to, uh, you know, doing it in-house. I just, you know, I just never remember the number nine, you know, or, or ten staff. That, uh, yeah, that was right. in the TASBO report. The, yeah, that was in the TASBO report, the initial report. Can I just and, ask a question? Uh-huh. Do you have the monitor? Do you have to have your cell phone up close to the microphone? Let me just take that off here. Does it matter? Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, this is the plan that we feel like will work best for the district. We do plan to purchase uh, some vehicles, some equipment for these people to use, and you know some of the some of the mowing had been taken back, I think, from from uh, our contracted mower, and I didn't realize that last summer. And there are some of our campuses right now that need mowing, but we're, we've got our tractor, we do have a tractor and a shredder and we've gotten it going and uh, I'm putting a guy on it today, but he ended up getting pulled to another direction, but uh, we do plan on starting uh, getting all, all those big fields that's not in our contract cleaned up. And we can, we can keep those mowed with this crew and with, with other, other people. And um, Mark, I was gonna ask, I, it seems like I remember that there was a you know, significant, or not, not huge, but I don't know, hundred or a couple hundred thousand dollar outlay in terms of equipment. We did not actually go that large. Um, 
I think we budgeted mm -hmm. only 30,000 for the initial outlay for this this year. Is that what we budgeted? Do you recall? Or maybe the year before? The year before was a, it was a. Yeah, no, um, we used about 65,000. We bought a vehicle. That's, well, I think now our equipment outlay, excluding the vehicles, is twenty no thirty thousand. Yeah, thirty thousand for the year. For the two years. We just did. We didn't do it the first year. We budgeted. We didn't use those funds that first okay. year. As we did the, this year in fourteen fifteen. Because I remember, I think it was a budget amendment. Mm -hmm. We did it in fourteen fifteen though. Okay. Anyway, so that's basically what our planned activities for that uh, ground crew that we uh, plan to hire, uh, one lead and two groundskeepers is mulch and clean beds, trim trees, shrubs, playground, power washing buildings, wash outside windows, parking lot maintenance and restriping, which we're, you know, we're doing some anyway. And my, the other staff, you know, will, are they all going to come out? Is it true to say that they're going to be uh, manicuring the lawns, though, those three? Is that what you classified them as? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, you're on your last slide. I am. Question, yeah. so I am. No, just I'm on question. So, um, if y'all have any, well, I'd be trying to try to. board have any questions? I have one. Dr. Allen? I have one. When going back to the maintenance part, all that, and it's really exciting that so many things are now computerized. It's got to save time and money, yes, and so much more efficient. But some of these things y'all are still working on, like getting everything, um, the records inputted. How long do you see um, that it's going to take you to get to to where you think we should be with the preventive maintenance. Preventive maintenance. It'll take it'll take a year or two to get where, where I want to be. But I'm just talking about the documentation, just making sure that everything's in the system. Right. For for all pieces of equipment to get in the system, it probably will take a couple of years. But that doesn't mean that we're not taking care of that equipment. Okay. That means that it's not in the system and getting documented like I yeah. want it to. I mean if a district this size, it's, it's just huge to get all that equipment in. Where I came from, which was about a third of the size of this district, and it took me at least a year and a half to get every piece of equipment numbered. Here, we're not going, I mean, I ordered X and numbers and then numbered each piece of equipment. Here, we're not doing that. We're doing it through a different method of we're recording, you know, and, and we, we're using the floor plan for HVAC equipment and that kind of stuff. Um, we hadn't Right now, we're just recording ice machines, kitchen equipment as, you know, X, X at Bowie or X at whatever campus. Um, and, of course, it's better if you can physically number them, but there's just no way this size of district. <laughs> you know, and, you know, in a hospital setting, you, you have to do that, uh, which is my several long time ago job. Uh, because when the inspector comes through, he'll, he'll pull numbers off five pieces of equipment and then bring it to you and say, show me what you've done to these these five pieces of equipment in the last two years. Commission. Luckily, we don't have that at the school <laughs> district, but that doesn't mean we don't, don't need to maintain it. So we do need to. This is uh, kind, of, kind of related to the facilities, but uh, I've heard different things. I haven't driven by all the campuses, but you know, it was an issue a number of years ago that there was, you know, every campus had sign that said, uh, Principal secretary parking, nurse parking, athletic trainer parking. All those signs are down across this entire district. That's so if I drove through correct. any one of these schools, that's I wouldn't correct. be finding individual parking signs for specific positions. That's correct. Whether it's I Hernandez, whether it's high school, whether it's I was anywhere. directed by Mr. to do that, I believe it's our first school year. 
for those that, unless they put them back up. <laughs> but that would be your guys doing that. So <laughs> my guys took them down. Yeah, but, but your guys wouldn't be putting they, them back up. No, but the reason, back up. the reason that was for security purposes. Right. That was they, a security. Do they say okay. reserved or anything, or are there just no signs? There, there are still some of the campuses that have reserved. some reserved parking painted on the curb. Right. Well, that, that I can there's, see. There's, there's a couple of signs that are said reserved, and in the audit report, the security report that Mr. Mayor is referencing. They said you don't have reserve for police because right. that means they know the police are not there. So we do have some reserve spots uh, that are outside of handicap as well. Without naming Without the naming. reserve for well, I know, I know, Mark, you had said it about that, you know, I guess the school safety initiative at Texas State that their actual recommendation was, you know, boy, if we came out to a campus and there's a sign that says principal parking, assistant principal parking, if I was the person wanting to do, you know, bad things, that, you know, that's <coughs> the kind of information I would want to know. Sure. And that was their recommendation uh, to pull those things down. Yeah. And those, those are down. Yeah, I've se several campuses I've visited, I don't see those anymore. So that's well, that's good. I'm not sure we got all the posts out, but <laughs> really what I want to do. No, worried about the, the post. The yeah. <laughs> well, the post don't look too <laughs> aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. So. That's good yes, to see. Uh, two questions <coughs> well, for now. Um, looking at the, it seems like we got audited and we got slammed on various things, academics and now some and maintenance. But look at it, looking at those findings that uh, you got from the audit report, mm -hmm. uh, several, I mean not several, but at least those major ones, you mentioned I think that it would be maybe about a year before you can get to all of them to make sure that all no, of them No, actually their, their uh, recommendation, I don't believe they said anything in their recommendations about moving from reactive maintenance to preventive maintenance. That is something that I know from being a maintenance director that that's, that's the direction we need to go. I mean, obviously if we can fix something before it's broken or before it affects students or staff, that's the direction we wanna go. Right now, the majority of our maintenance is reactive where we get a phone call, hey, this air conditioner isn't working. Now, I will say, you know, just but I mean, every morning my HVAC techs look at every campus on what it's doing, heating and air conditioning wise. Now that doesn't mean that we don't still have some issues. You know, all those new units we put in this summer, we're still having some issues, especially at Miller. But uh, still they look at that every morning. So that's in a way preventive maintenance because they know before the staff gets going or kids get there anyway, that what, what's happening at those campuses. Um, but no, ma'am, I don't think, it, I think it'll be a year or so before we get, or a year and a half before we get preventive maintenance all the way documented the, thing, the way I think it should be documented. So you're saying that uh, preventive is going to address all these findings? Well, I believe our React, our, our new software is actually addressing the majority of the findings. So I, I, the I think we're addressing, I think reactive. we've addressed the findings through our new work order system. Well, I was just looking at the findings. I, yes, I can barely read it, but I'm trying to read it. Um, standard operating procedures, for instance. That's, this is that's in, that, yes, ma'am, that's in place. And, and this, as far as the um, the current work order system, that's the one that you were talking about that was in place, and now you're implementing a new one? Yes, ma'am, a new one was implemented last June. Just out of curiosity, is the um, is there are you seeing a cost savings regarding uh, the turf fields that they don't have to be mowed? I mean, is there, I mean, I'm just wondering. No, not not as of yet. Of course, most of them were, the, the one at the high school is brand new and then uh -huh. at the stadium, so that wasn't I a field we'll that y'all mowed I guess we'll see maybe this summer? Yes, ma'am. And I, I think you'll see some water savings in our. Yeah. Well, the plan. water should be water the biggest water savings. Water savings. Our plan <laughs> is to, through that water savings, have a written plan with the city to be able to water more of our campuses uh, for that because we are saving water at those fields. One, one last question uh, mm -hmm. on the work orders that are that you receive. What is the more or less the average of uh, finishing up a work order? I mean are there are there some that are long standing because maybe related to staff, related to parts, related? Yes ma'am. There are, there are some that are long standing. We do look at every week, every Monday morning I get an email actually it comes at mm -hmm. Sunday night late from the system emails me and the maintenance supervisor every open work order. So we review those and see where we are. And you know, we then if there's something that we feel like should be completed, we, we ask the staff, you know, whichever staff member that's been assigned to, 
you know, where are we on this? What are we doing on this? And I mean, that's a constant everyday deal. We're, you know, we're looking at work orders and seeing where we are on things. I mean, that's every well, day. How many did you say you get either a week or a month? How many did you say you get? We're, we're closing about 500 a month and we get about 20 to 25 per day. And that's basically with the staff that you have? Yes, ma'am. So it's just two Of course, the work orders don't come from my staff. They come from no, no. You know, across the district. No, that's but what I'm yes, saying. But you are We're getting able to close. work orders with the number of staff that you have. Yes, ma'am. Is that become a challenge, or is it the It does at times. I mean, there, there's definitely a challenge at times, and there's, you know, and I've tried to get the staff, you know, I showed you the list of who all we have, uh, yes. And, um, but that doesn't mean if you're the electrician and you're caught up, you can't help somebody else. Somebody else, <laughs> and, that, and that's <laughs> no you know that cross training that is something that that, it, that it's hard to get across in a, in a district or you know well I'm, that's not I'm not supposed but yes that's and the guys are, are being pretty receptive to that. I feel like. Okay. Uh, I was wondering, like, for instance, I keep, you know, because I work more closely with the maintenance department than any other department sure. in, in the district uh, where I work. Uh, I keep things like uh, defrost timers for all my walk-ins, contactors, uh, defrost timers and stuff like that. Yeah. Is there something like that? Because that way when something, the, the, sure. the most common things that go out sure. on big pieces of equipment where right. you have the potential of, you know, loss of, of right. inventory. We, um, do, we do have, definitely have parts in stock. I, I mean, I assume most of y'all have seen our maintenance warehouse. Each department or each group has an area that they keep locked up. They keep parts. They keep, you know, the electricians keep ballast and plugs and all sorts of things. The HVAC guys, you know, keep lots of equipment, keep Freon on, sta on you know, in stock. And so, yes, we do have a stock of stuff. And, and when you were talking about like a year or two years to be able to get the PM, doesn't the, the software system have something like, for instance, when you're uh, cleaning an ice machine or something, that would be, you know, preventive maintenance. Maybe you do that right. twice a year or something. Or right. if you're changing yes. filters yes. out, uh, you know, across the district, they're going to turn on tapping right. every single day. I mean, so is there not a piece in preventive maintenance as they're doing their normal jobs that that's just yes. entering? And the thing, you know, it has a, you can mark it as reactive or preventive maintenance or whatever. And I'm just now getting the guys to start putting that stuff as preventive. But what I'm saying is getting all of our equipment list in there so that, you know, uh, when I go work on this ice machine, I'm recording it and we know it. You know, we know that, hey, okay, last year I worked on an ice machine and did this. Now the guys probably do know a lot of times, depending on what it is. But you know, everybody's forgetful. Hey, you know, I think I worked on that air conditioner you know, well, if we don't have, you know, it's air handler unit number so-and-so in our system, then then we may not know, you know. Hey, I think I replaced that on this air conditioner last year. Well, did you or didn't you, you know? Yeah. I mean, we can't know unless we have all, that's what I'm saying, to get all the equipment. You know, and it's constantly changing, you know. Like yeah, I said, you we need had something better than anecdotal records, you know. If you but the work order system right. has the capability to be able to put that information. <coughs> yes, sir. Yes, and sir, also right? just your work Right. It, it's, it has a schedule. It, it's you know, you set the schedule. You know, you know. One thing that I really think we need in there quick, which won't take much time, is is the playgrounds. You know, are we PM in those playgrounds? Because I had, from where I came from, that came up to be an issue. You know, we, we had a kid got hurt on the playground, and hey, when's the last time? And I had a PM schedule. I took it to the board and said, "Here's my PM schedule. Here's what we did. Here's when we PM'd it." what we done and you know that can be a big thing for um, well if the state anything. was to monitor those you'd be in, we'd be in big trouble as far as those playgrounds I mean I was a child care licensing worker and I had to go out and monitor some state after school programs and of course that the the playground areas where that, that they use does not come under our purview as far as the state's purview correct yeah. and so but I could see lots of opportunities for children to really get hurt right and that's one thing we, we definitely need to, to work on. But we, we're working that direction for sure. Are you able, I'm sorry, yeah. uh, so just putting them on a PM schedule and keeping all that uh, information and in logs somewhere, I mean, we're going through the same ritual. But sure. tribal wisdom, 
only takes you so far right. and when they retire, <laughs> you kind of take that but, wisdom but with them and you don't know who worked on that right. piece of equipment last year. Uh, and we're doing the same thing, developing it but when and, I s and putting it together with. Right, yeah. and it's just, when I started at the hospital on the air handling, it's literally on the side of the air handling with a white marker. <laughs> but they were documenting. So. Eventually, you're gonna run out of room. <laughs> hey, are, you, are you having problems with? Uh, I know it was an issue in, in other districts too that uh, uh, sometimes campuses, like principals, for instance, don't really understand the difference between. And you sort of alluded to this before. Before maintenance and construction. So, for instance, if right. I said I want a wall built here we're really not talking about maintenance we're talking about new construction I went to a TASB class on facilities mm -hmm. a couple of years ago and uh, the guy that was teaching the class was saying well you know and then if you're going to turn that in then I ask that you you know get approval from someone and that you also turn it in with a budget code because right. you know building Correct. a wall is yeah. really not the yeah. responsibility you know financially or you know work-wise of the maintenance department right and so is there that is one thing we're definitely in place about working toward with Ms. Ms. Griffith and trying to get those kind of things, you know, where they are, the, the principals do realize that there's a difference between what I call a scope alteration or, you know, <laughs> minor construction versus versus a work order. But it's still, it's, you know, I mean, it's still a work in progress with, the, with those principals. And I haven't done due diligence with them either on, on training them. You know, I've talked to them individually, but. I probably need to get with them and, and to let them understand. And some, some of them are going to like them, some of them aren't. It's always easier for that to come out of your money and not <laughs> <laughs> your budget. Well, sure, sure. And I don't mind that if we budgeted for right. it. And, uh, and, you know, if it's something, you know, like me and Meyer won the other day, was a projector in the ceiling. we got to have power. We have a presentation in two hours. Well, did you put in a work order? No, we didn't put in a work order. But we need it in two hours or three hours, actually. And I said, well, that's not an hour project. And she said, well, no, you have three. <laughs> I said, well, it's not a three hour project. We'd run conduit up there to that projector. But anyway, we got them, we got an extension cord and got them power so they could have their presentation and then we were running power. So. Jay, I think probably my last comment is, you know, now that we're into April with, uh, you know, almost a full year of a lot of facilities or at least, you know, a part of a year, have we looked at you know, how those, all these new facilities are having an impact on uh, the utility bills, you know, water, I, natural gas. You know, I haven't, I, I did start to look at that a few months ago because I was real interested in what it was saving. Of course, the issue is our energy management system was also in the old work order system. And the administrative uh, secretary has been going back three years and putting our bills in. She, I don't know exactly where she is today, but that's the trouble. We couldn't pull that data, or actually, I think we might have could have pulled that data, but they wanted a couple of thousand dollars to pull the data out of that old system and put it in our new. And and I said, well, we've got the bills, we've got the information, we can put it in. And I had used, as I said, that same system at home, and we did the same thing there. But to be able to compare data, you've got to have that previous data. Sure. And uh, but we we are getting there right now. I couldn't tell you but we will be able to as soon as we get all that information in and are able to watch. I mean, and I, I would feel like with these new HV, all these new HVAC units, we will have a big savings. I certainly hope we do. And I was gonna just say FYI, prior to this last bond, I actually went through and I looked at the old cost of what Bowie and Travis and Crockett were before they were rebuilt. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at it both on the total cost and I looked at it on a cost per square foot. And you know, in this new bond, there's with all the new HVAC, there was supposed to be, you know, significant savings stuff. Windows I, too, remember? Pardon me? Windows. Win windows. But windows, I, I'll right. just say this, when I looked at the difference between all three of those schools, you know, together we were talking about, you know, tens of thousands of difference, not hundreds of right, thousands of dollars. Right. Plus today we have, you know, hundreds of thousands right. of square feet of additional, you right. know, facility right. that needs to be cooled, yeah. needs and to be heated and cooled right. and maintained. And I just, uh, you know, I just would hate to get into the kind of the end of the year where we are, uh, you know, don't have sufficient funds or have to, you know, take the right. fund balance. Well, we are watching our budget else. for this year for sure, and, you know, and we're okay there. But as far as comparing previous data, I mean, I'd like to. And like you said, when you're adding square footage, you know, definitely your costs are going to go up. So 
you know, really you need to compare units of measure, whichever they are for BTUs or kilowatt hours or whatever for whatever utility and what, what your savings are there. But I would think we would have significant savings and, you know, hopefully dollar savings as well. Yeah. Maybe Mark has something you can get to the board, just, you know, kind of where we are, like mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, here's our and budget for, you know, utility bill and this is yeah. where we are, you know, at this point. Yeah. And I, and once we get that data in, I can definitely give you, I mean, I did that at my previous district. I pulled the previous two years of data compared to this year or three years of data compared to this year to show where we were now, you know, sometimes that gets skewed and you can, but uh, we can definitely do that. Thank you. Uh, hopefully we will have that data in fairly quickly. But that is one thing we're working on. And energy management is another thing that I didn't really mention, but you know, that's, that's a huge, huge deal as well. Um, and I'm working with Ms. Griffith on that. You know, uh, so. and there's different programs out there that do it, but Dripping Springs is, uh, has implemented a pretty aggressive energy management. We're seeing between four and $500,000 a year in savings, which is, you know, a significant chunk of change. For, from, from inside the district? Inside the district. We yeah. actually have a, a, a specific person that does that. Let me yeah. tell you what, we're gone for a week and it's kind of a pain, but the little refrigerator or break room's turned off and you know, you'll get a note on your desk if you left your right. computer on. And, uh, but you know, again, four to five hundred thousand dollars in a it's district smaller than this is a significant, significant. amount of savings. And yeah, we it's, talk, it's we've amazing. actually talked to that same company and uh, we're, we're submitting data to them. They did a presentation to us uh, a couple months ago. Oh my gosh, a couple <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> okay. It's been that long. It's been that long. So we are, we are looking yeah. at that. I know, Mark, you, you and I have spoken about this before, and I, you said some people, you know, really love it, and other people say, you know, it really wasn't that beneficial to them. And I know there's yeah. a lot of people out there that do it, but, you know, we've had, you know, very good luck in Dripping Springs in terms of reducing costs and reimbursing yeah. that money for kids. Well, what you, you have to have is, you know, administrative and port support. So the, I've, I've implemented one of those. And, and, you know, like you said, taking those refrigerators and microwaves and everything else out of those teacher's rooms is not, not always pleasant, but... <laughs> But John, it's the problem is just conditioning people to do that. That's, that's correct. And to turn off and, and it, it, take, it takes it takes it takes it takes a it takes a, uh, a commitment from the top, you know, oh, really yeah. probably I'll say from the board and from the superintendent. The because yeah, when all of a sudden you know someone's saying you know what, you know I want it to be 68, and we're saying no, you know the maximum temperature is 74. You certainly don't make every person happy with that. But again, when you start looking at you know saving close to half a million dollars a year, you, you got to say, right. you know, wait a minute, you know the needs of the the many outweigh the needs of the few. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn unless somebody else has a question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. And I will send you all that information. I apologize. It was hard that's, to read. That's but okay. I'll, I'll give it to you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thank I move we adjourn. Dr. Allen is moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. Ms. Diapondo <laughs> has seconded. Hey, all those in favor, please raise your hands. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Six zero at six forty nine. Thank y'all. Thank y'all very much. Okay. See you later. Wait, Is that the one?